Mark in Australia. Welcome to the show. Uh, hi, Jim. Hi, J. Mark. How are you today? Good. I'm doing just fine. I'm good. Go ahead. You wanted to talk about simulation uh, theory and the problem of faith? Yes. Um, so my take on, I suppose, reality is that we are living in a simulation. Um, but the issue that I personally have with it is I almost have to take it as an issue of faith that it's true because I can't prove it. Okay. Is faith a, a good pathway to truth? Well, I would prefer to have concrete evidence to prove that what I believe exists, exists, but I can't point towards something that would show, yes, we are in the simulation when I can't. So my, my personal issue is, with it is that it, I'd prefer it to not be an issue of faith and that I could point to someone something and say, yes, this is real and I can prove it rather than going, well, I just have to have faith that it could be real. So it sounds like you're saying, no, faith is not a good pathway to truth. I would prefer for it not to be. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and uh, a lot of us would prefer to have a lot of things, but that doesn't make it true. Um, I mean, you can say you, f you favor the idea, but to say you believe in it without evidence, is that rational? Well, I, I would agree with the, I would, I would prefer it to be true. Yeah. Yeah. But, that, but to say you believe in it, I mean, that that's going a bit, that, that to me is going a bit far, right? Well, depending on your definition of belief, I would like to believe that it's true. It makes sense to me, but I can't uh, prove it. So that, that's where my well, faith me, issue can came I, in. Can I, can I ask you to kind of clean up the waters there? Because you said what you mean by believe. Like if I asked you the proposition, um, whether or not you think we live in a simulation, you would respond with either a true or false value. Presumably it's going to be true, right? Yes. Yeah, so you hold that the proposition on the table is true. right? So we can kind of cash that out in terms of what people believe, like the propositional attitudes towards some proposition that they have. But it sounds like you already had said it earlier. You're saying... Uh, that it's something you prefer to believe and i kind of hold to faith being a testament to what people prefer to believe but you don't really choose those things like you're convinced for a reason so was, there's got to be some underlying reason that you have um other than just picking the belief there has to be something that's convinced you that this is true well through all of my experiences and uh searching for truth and examining the various options of what happens to you after you die, simulation theory makes the most sense to me. Sure. And so what's the inconsistency with a view that's op opposite or antithetical to that, right? And say, um, like, what would be the inconsistency in that view? Because I'm wondering why you would hold to that if you couldn't point like what would be the inconsistency in saying that the world is just natural and not simulated with all the things that you have baked into the simulation well with simulation theory multiple things can be true at the same time for example uh when christians try to argue yes jesus really did exist and atheists say there isn't enough evidential proof to show that he existed apart from some eyewitness documents from thousands of years ago, or when Christians say, uh, I believe that the Bible is true because the Bible says it's true, but it's a very circular argument where um, 
if you to if you were to try to ask a Christian, um, can you explain? Well, uh, sorry, can I can I cut you off real quick? Because I I I'm sorry to cut you off, but like the the question is, what would be inconsistent with the things that you believe there being just accounted for by say naturalism or something like that? Right? What would what would be the hang up? Because if uh, if we can just take the two theories and they're like on an exponent, like they're on a par from terms of generating an expectation, right? There's nothing new in the future that's going to put one kind of ahead in the race uh, as the other. Um, then I don't I don't know how, what grounds you have. So what would be the what would be the uh, inconsistency with everything you think about reality that couldn't be the case for naturalism? Naturalism doesn't explain what happens after you die. So, but it does. It says that you don't have brain function and you cease to process information, right? So it does have an answer to the question. So I don't... Okay. Right, you're just ass you would be assuming that there would be some essence to continue living, but it, it explains that pretty close. Like, it's a pretty close... Look, on two on one end you have it's weird because you're looking for an explanation and the explanation is it explains um what happens when after we die on one end but we don't even know what that looks like right so i don't know what it's actually explaining but on the other end it's kind of closed right it's like closed off in parentheses it's like when you die your brain stops functioning you don't process information and it's a lot like when you existed in the year 1902. so to me it sounds like that has a like a more fleshed out explanation than the other one, because the other one can't even tell you what the other side would look like. Okay. Well, I suppose my, um, not necessarily argument, but discussion point would be rather than framing it as simulation theory or naturalism, uh, versus the atheist point of view, it would be more like simulation theory versus the Christian point of view or the New Age point of view or some other religious point of view that posits that something happens after you die. Yeah, but that's just... Sorry, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I would say atheism doesn't actually necessarily oppose... Um, Simulation theory is it's, it's simply a simple statement that we do not accept as true the claim that there is a God. Uh, we reject that claim. Uh, some of us go a step further and some of us uh, don't, and, and there's a lot of mix in there. But with simulation theory, you're not necessarily proposing a God. You're just proposing we're in a simulation. And so there's no God necessarily involved. So I'm not sure. And when you say the atheist point of view, uh, we're a Venn diagram of beliefs in uh, points of view that that have one overlapping point. That is, we don't uh, we reject the, the claim that there's a god, one or more gods. Um, so it's not even a, really a, a wide point of view. Um, but you, you know, you so simulation theory do, it, and Christianity don't also necessarily oppose each other because. Uh, the Christian God could exist in some simulation, um, or he could have existed in a prior iteration of the the simulation and doesn't exist now if it's a simulation. But I don't see what simulation theory actually does for you in terms of the power of explanation of anything that naturalism doesn't do better. It doesn't even say you would continue living. It just could be the same process of ceasing to not be in the simulation. Okay. So, like, one way to look at it is the, the simulation theory you're applying could be kind of nested in naturalism, right? Like, you just say that there's this natural world that simulates, and then that's what we experience. But if you really think about that, you're adding something extra there, right? And if you add something extra, like any theory, right, you make it a little bit more complicated, you have to substantiate that claim uh, in a way but it's hard to like criticize you on it because you've already said you just take it on faith, which to me is just saying, I trust that it's true. And I can trust a lot of things that are true that aren't actually true. 
I agree with you. So wouldn't okay. a better answer just to say, I don't know, and then just stay there until you do know? Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I just wanted, uh, I suppose, another point of view um, along the lines of not saying that um, the concrete atheist uh, worldview is obviously, as Jim said before, the that you don't believe that a God exists or that there's sufficient evidence to prove that there's a God, uh, more that um, is there anything after we die uh, that continues on regardless of whether a God exists or not? I don't know. That's kind of the question, right? We, we don't have any evidence, yeah. but to say that, that, you know, definitively that nothing happens, that we're not, uh, that there isn't some part of us that continues to go on. I mean, people still have memories of us. If, if um, we, we set records, the, the Guinness World of Bo uh, Book of World Records will, will have us in it. If we do something that is of historical significance, uh, all those things are things that continue on after we die. Um, if we have children, our genetics continue on after we die. Does that count? I don't think it does, but for some people it might. So I don't have any evidence, and I'm not willing to believe something without evidence because beliefs inform actions and actions have consequences, right? If I believe that there is life after death, that life after death will be better than this life, then I'm justifying doing terrible things to myself and that's not good those are bad actions especially based without good evidence that that's even true so i this is kind of why i'm um i mean if you want to believe it that's fine but uh it's you know what kind of actions does that lead you to take based on your belief that this is a a simulation right i mean for all we know um j mike is the only real person in this conversation and we're all just ai's Right? I mean, that could be the case. It could be, but then Jay Mike could be extremely lonely. <laughs> well, he's got a bunch of AIs to talk to. Well, yeah, and the, yeah, the, thing, that Jim's, the thing that Jim's pointing out, too, that I'll tack on is that ex, um, in terms of like explanatory virtue, it's on par with what like some guy, you know, shouting conspiracies to you says on the street they're on an epistemic par or there's nothing that separates that conjecture from some other conjecture i don't know about you i don't want that like i'm okay with saying i don't know you know and that's fine that's much better to me than like taking conjecture that's on a par with someone else's conjecture where there's no like care for evidence right the whole rigorous process of going into science or whatever methodology uh someone wants to offer and rather sidestep that, um, yeah, that, that just kind of lends you up to being on par with theories that have no basis, right? And that's precisely what it is. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for calling, Mark. We appreciate it, and we hope we answered some questions for you. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Thank thanks. you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Bye. Well, I like... It, I mean, seems yeah. extremely humble in, in the view of, compared to a lot of people I've talked with and yeah. um, in that sense. And so I think there's some, some good humility there from that perspective. Yeah.